Hi, today we are looking at the last section of chapter eight, which is applications of sinusoidal functions. Now in this section, we're essentially just doing word problems with what we've learned about our graphs of sine and cosine. So essentially we'll be applying transformations and coming up with equations based off situations. And then sometimes taking a bit further and solving for a value at a particular time or location. So two, two main types of problems we'll face is one will be given a scenario where you'll determine values of A, B, C, and D from the information given. You'll then use these values to create an equation that models the situation. You may then be asked to use that equation to solve for something. The second type is you'll give in some points to graph. And then once you have your graph, you can do what we did in the previous section and come up with your equation of that graph. So for example, piston moves vertically in a cylinder. Starting at its minimum height, every 20 seconds it repeats its cycle in which it goes from a height of 15 centimeters to 35 centimeters and back to 15 centimeters. We want to come up with an, a sine function that models this, and we only know what height it is at at a time of 26 seconds. So for part A, the first thing we will solve for is our A value, our amplitude. So we know our amplitude is our distance between our minimum and maximum points and divided by two. So our maximum was 35. We'll subtract our minimum from that, so 15 divided by two, that gives us an amplitude of 10. Now to get our D value, it's the average of our maximum and minimum values divided by two. So 35 plus 15 divided by two gives us a midline of 25. Now we know our B value is two pi divided by our period. Now in this case, it tells us it repeats every 20 seconds. So that's our period. So we have two pi divided by 20. We can reduce this to lower terms. So that's pi over 10. Now if, uh, next is getting our C value for that, we need to reference our original graph of sine. So our graph of sine looks something like this. Now it tells us it starts at a minimum height. So well, we know that essentially it has this minimum height when our new x is equal to zero. So we have to find a minimum. So we can use this minimum or this minimum. I tend to use whichever minimum is closest to our y-axis. So that'd be negative pi over two. We could use this one, it would still be correct. So using our point equation, our x part of it was x over b plus c essentially gives us our new coordinate. So would give us our new x, or if this would be our old x. So we have our old, which is negative pi over two divided by our b value of pi over 10 plus c equals our new x, which was zero. So that gives us a C value of five. So our equation, which takes the form of y equals a sine of b x minus c plus d, will now look like 10 sine of our b value of pi over 10 times x minus our c value of 5 plus our d value of 25. Now for part b, we are 
figure out where it is at a time of 26 seconds. So we're just going to substitute 26 in for x. So we've got y equals 10 sine of pi over 10 times 26 minus 5 plus 25. And making sure we're in radians and entering that in our calculator tells us at that point will be a height of 28.09 centimeters. Okay, so this was an example of the first type of question where if they give us essentially all the information we need in a word problem to then go solve it and come up with our A, B, C, and D. The next type of question is this one. So they've given us a table of values for a tide height predicted every two hours starting at midnight. And essentially they've used military time, so 24 hour clock and given us uh, different heights. So the very first thing we will do is graph this data. We'll then see what information from this data we can utilize for coming up with an equation. Okay, so across the bottom, we have our time. So this would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and we're actually going to have to go slightly off the graph, 22. Going up this way, Got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is our tide heights here. So at time of zero, we're at a height of 4.6. At a time of two hours, we're at 6.5. Time of four hours, we're at 5.7. A time of six hours, we're at 3.5. A time of eight hours, we're at 1.4. Time of 10 hours, we're at 1.7. Time of 12 hours, we're at 4.0. 14 hours, we're at 6.1. 16 hours, we're at 5.8. 18 hours, we're at 3.9. 20 hours, we're at 1.8. And then we're at 1.7 at 22. So graphing this, we have something that looks something like this. Now we had two y values that corresponded. So at 10, we were at 1.7. At 22, we are also at 1.7. So because those points appear to be corresponding, we'll take that to be our period. So 10 to 22 would be a period of 12. Now getting our A value, that's going to be the distance between our maximum and minimum divided by two. So our maximum value was 6.5. And our minimum value was 1.4. We're going to divide that by 2. And that gives us 
to get our D value. It's an average of those numbers, so 6.5 plus 1.4 divided by 2. So that gives us 3.95, which makes me realize I made a small mistake in this previous calculation. I added those instead of subtracting them. So we'll just recalculate that. So we've got 6.5 minus 1.4 divided by 2 gives us 2.55. Now our B value is two pi divided by our period. Now our period in this case is 12 hours. So we've got two pi divided by 12. So our B value is pi over six. Now, this point was our highest point here. So we'll utilize this for our new x. And we're going to match that up with a maximum on our original graph of sine. So our original graph of sine looks something like this. So this maximum occurred at pi over 2. So that will be our old x. OK, so what's left is getting our c value. So we know from our point equation that if we have x old over b plus c, that gives us our new x. So our old x was pi over 2. That's being divided by our b value of pi over 6. Plus c gives us our new x, which is 2. So that gives us 3 plus c equals 2. So c is equal to negative 1. So our overall equation would be y is equal to our a, which is 2.55, sine of our b, which is pi over 6, x minus our c value. So that becomes plus 1 plus our d value of 3.95.